take for granted that his that there is not a visible that we do not see a a a sign of him visibly. There is no pillar of cloud or or fire. The presence of the Lord when it descends on his when it descends on people people's faces are in the dirt so we're, we're living like that we we don't even pretend even when we're in need we don't pretend even then to be in his presence really and truly acknowledge that he, that you're that we're talking to the living god we it's have to be brought low first that and that's just me that's my opinion but no but i um, think i think you're right i think there's some there's very definitely some validity to what you're saying. Um, on that note, this morning, I got a message which said, because I've been having this conversation about, um, you know, the conversation that we keep having with both believers and non-believers alike about whether or not the God of Islam and the God of the Bible are the same one. Uh. So I got a message this morning that says, so here's the thing. From what I can tell, you feel the defining characteristic of a religion is what is written in its particular holy book. Or, to put it another way, you take a du jour stance. Right? Mm. Okay? okay? Yeah, okay. Now, you know, you know what? That, that's foolishness. Why? In the sense that, no, maybe I'm look, I'm maybe I'm jumping ahead. I'm making an assumption. Well, de jure means in law. Well, okay. okay so I didn't know what that meant, but just to say that I I look at the book of a particular group of people, and I look at it, and this is how I make an uh, an assumption about what this religious group stand for means. Mm -hmm. What 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 else is there? Well, here's the problem. Here's the other side of it, okay? While that is not unreasonable, says this person, it does not reflect the de facto situation. De facto means in practice. Yes. So what the person is saying to me is that I'm looking at things from the perspective of the books when I should be looking at them from the perspective of what people do. No, that's stupid. And that's stupid. That's that's stupid. But that is the common yeah. practice today, and that's what Steve is saying. I'm almost that offended. We, that's stupid. But but what's but this is what Steve is saying that we approach God in a de facto sense. There's the way we practice, yeah. which is if we were really looking at God in terms of right. what you know the God of the Old Testament yes. who would strike you dead for nonsense. Yes. yes. Right. Yes. Fire and brimstone, as everybody wants to say, right? Right. So, we're doing the same thing, or so it would appear. The issue, I think, and that's why I asked, do we take things for granted, is that we rely on the fact that because God's wrath was poured out on Jesus, it's, we're, okay. we're covered. And so where God's wrath is expended, he's got it all out of his system. And there's nothing for us to do. Right. Well, that's not true. Right. Well, here's, here's... I mean, but there's... Right. There's no works, but it's not true. It's, it's not... But, but there are works. But the works are as a result of our understanding of grace. Yes. And, and that, is what, that is what John is saying here. It's about perseverance. I, the one who keeps the prophetic words of this book is blessed. My reward is with me to repay each person according to what he has done. Does this mean that, that Jesus is going to judge your salvation by your works? No. No. But your works are going to be judged because of grace. You were created for good work. Right. That's it. You, you have been given grace to have faith, and your faith is what determines your works. What you believe is what you'll do. And so the, the reality is that we all 
look at God from, or we all behave in a de facto way. We shouldn't, but we do. Yeah. Yeah. Amen, that's it. Okay. So the person continued, while it's not unreasonable, what's not unreasonable, the fact that I look at these books from a de jure stance, it does not reflect the de facto situation, that no religion, to my knowledge, is practiced that way. Not even the most, um, I'm sorry, not even the most ultra-Orthodox ultra Jews have multiple wives or kill their sons for dishonoring them or any of a huge list of things, which is what it's said that they're able to, to do. Uh, those, those things he lists are very much like what, what the atheist or average hater of God will do. They, they'll reach into some app the most heinous thing that they read in scripture and could pull it completely out of context and say, I don't see, I don't see you selling your daughters uh, into, into slavery or, or some, something like that. <laughs>